Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your 24th lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we canvassed our Pagoda model. In this lesson, we are going to reinforce the brake line of our jacket with a tape often referred to as the bridle. You see, the brake line of our jacket runs diagonally across the warp and the weft, which makes it somewhat fall on the bias of our material, which is the flexible part. Now, to prevent our jacket from stretching on the brake line and falling down and kind of like swinging sideways, we reinforce this area with the bridle. Before we get to do that, however, there are a few things that we have to prepare. So, this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to mark the brake line on the fabric and the canvas side. Then we're going to trim back our horsehair and our domet inlay. And last but not least, we're going to cut our bridle and base it on the brake line. You ready? Let's go. Before we actually start putting our bridle on, let's make sure that everything is pressed nice and smoothly. If you've put your forepart away and it's all wrinkled up, just give it a good press so that everything is nice and smooth. Now, what I mentioned earlier was that the brake line is running diagonally across the warp and the weft. So here we have our brake line and here we have our weft and here we have our warp. The warp, of course, is not flexible and neither is the weft. However, if we pull along our brake line, it's very flexible. So we want to reinforce this area and prevent it from stretching. On top of that, we also want to slightly gather the area around the brake line so that once it folds back, the folded edge is slightly curling towards the chest for a closer fit. We are essentially creating a little gather along the brake line. And if you've studied what a gather is, you will understand what it does on the brake line. So let's begin with the positioning. Simulate gravity and flatten your front edge, okay? I don't want you to pull in the chest or anything else. Just let the forepart sit on your board, simulate gravity, flatten the fronts. Then take your ruler, preferably your L-square, and align your L-square on one side against the neck point and on the other side right on the button. If it's difficult to see where your button is, just draw a chalk line on the button and continue the lapel and front edge line to create an intersection, okay? We have to go right to that cross. The L square I have is inch and a quarter wide. That means that this width is one inch and a quarter. That's about three centimeters. Our color stand is also an inch and a quarter wide. So the brake line is a continuation of the color stand, which means that from the neck point, we have to measure whatever the color stand is, in this case, inch and a quarter, and then from that point, go right to our button. Okay, and because this is an inch and a quarter, I can simply align one edge with the neck point and the other with the button. Once we've done that, hold your hands firmly on your ruler and draw a line. Now, you may see that your mark stitches for your brake line are a bit outwards. If you try to bring them in, that's all very nice. But when we simulate gravity, which is how the jacket will hang, we'll notice that everything moves out. Why does this happen? Well, there are a few reasons. We have done a bunch of things to our canvas and our forepart, and now it doesn't behave as it was behaving when it was completely flat. So it's okay if it passes over. Just mark the brake line as your forepart lays after the simulation of gravity. Don't mark too firm. We don't want the chalk lines to be permanent. I'm just doing it so that you can see what I'm doing. So once you've marked the brake line, hold your ruler there and grab a weight. Put that weight on your ruler so that the ruler does not move. You can put another weight at the bottom so that you can work with both of your hands. Then I want you to fold over the lapel with a piece of chalk or in my case, graphite, mark against the edge of your ruler, which will transfer the brake line onto the canvas side. 
Then I want you to fold back the domet and the horsehair at the top and do the same here in the middle. Be careful that your ruler doesn't move and at the bottom. Obviously, if you don't have an L square, I recommend you get one. But if you really don't have one, draw your line by marking the color stand, which is an inch and a quarter. Then from that point, mark a straight line towards the button and then simply do what I did with a smaller ruler or a shorter ruler, step by step. Align, fold over, mark, move over, fold over, mark, etc. So we've marked our brake line. Now it's time to flip everything over. Grab your block, allow the front half of your jacket to lay flat on your board. Take your ruler again and mark your brake line on the domet and the canvas by connecting the dots that we marked. I'm going to use a pencil so that it's all clear and visible. Now it's time to trim away the horse hair and the domet. Be very careful not to cut away your lapel or your canvas. It is perfectly normal for your initial brake line, which we marked in the very beginning when we cut out the canvas, not to be exactly aligned with your new brake line, okay? These things move around. No matter how accurate you work, it's all being manipulated from all different angles where we have little control over. Your domet edge is now going to represent your new brake line along with that little marking that we have on the canvas. It is now time to trim back the horsehair. We have to trim back the horsehair to allow the lapel to fold over and along the brake line without being pushed forward. If the horsehair stays exactly on the brake line, by the time we put our bridle on and our facings and all the other components, it may very well be that the horsehair pushes the brake line inwards and does not allow it to really sit right on that line. Therefore, we trim it back a quarter of an inch. Another important reason for trimming the horsehair back is that we want the horsehair to be covered by the domet. If it isn't covered by the domet, chances will be that the horsehair goes right through all the materials and pokes the wearer. We do not want that. That's very uncomfortable. So just fold back the domet. You should be able to do that because we didn't pad all the way to the end. Tap your iron on the domet to hold it temporarily back. And then I want you to trim back the horsehair a quarter of an inch. That's six millimeters. Again, be very careful you do not cut your canvas. And now we're going to trim back our second layer of horsehair, also a quarter of an inch, behind the new edge of our horsehair. Get all of that excess horsehair out, just blow it all away, don't allow any of it to go inside the domet. And that's it. Now you can fold back the domet and we are ready to cut our bridle. So put everything to the side and grab your silicia. If you're working with our improvers bundle, you'll have a length of silicia in there, which we've already used for the side piece of our canvas. Okay, now I want you to take the silicia and bring up the selvage piece. That's the grain with the least amount of stretch. If you would look at the cross grain, which is the weft, that has some flexibility in it. But the selvage piece does not have any flexibility in it. Now, what I want you to do is to take a pin or a needle and your ruler, of course, and mark one inch over from the edge of your selvage inwards, like so. That's two and a half centimeters. Now, we want to make sure that we cut straight along the line, perfectly on the grain. How do we do that? We can't just draw a straight line. A lot of times the grain will be distorted and you won't be cutting perfectly along the straight grain. So what we do is we take a needle and take one of the yarns out of that area, like so. Then we take that yarn and we begin pulling gently because yarns will break very quickly and just bring the fabric over as if we are distributing it towards the other side. And we do this on a single layer. So then just hold the end as firm as you can and pull everything over towards the other side until you've reached that side. Now you will see a faint line going across. Cut along that line and do exactly the same thing on the other side. 
and that's that. Now fold your silicia up and put it away. Now what I want you to do is to take your needle again and fray a few yarns on your cut edge. Because you've cut perfectly along the straight grain, this should be very easy to do. That's one. And that's two. Now the reason why we did this is that sometimes, depending on what type of silicia you're using, your cut edge may feel like a step. So we remove some of the yarns to thin out that area for a smoother transition. Now why do we use silicia? Should we use silicia? What's the difference? Well, as long as the material that you're using is tightly woven and not thick, you can use anything for your bridle. Sometimes tailors use a narrower tape which comes on a roll and they would just simply cut that and apply that on the bridle. If you're working with our improvers bundle we will have exactly this tape as it is rolled up in that bundle. Do not use that tape. We will need that tape for the taping of our front edges lapel and bottom of our jacket when we get to finish it. So leave that someplace safe until we get to it. What we have to do is to prepare the silicia and allow it to shrink. So take your iron, dry iron, do not use steam, we're going to use water, heat it up and once it's hot apply some water on it and you'll see that it shrinks. Now once the water has settled a bit take your iron without just leaving it on, just tap it over like so and slowly dry it off. Now I can hear a question in your mind. If some tailors use a tape like this, which is quite narrow, why are we using a tape that is this wide? Why did we cut one inch as our bridle? The answer is very simple. The width of your bridle has to do a few things. First of all, it has to give enough coverage in the current and future brake line area. What do I mean with the future brake line area? As you have already seen, our brake line slightly changes in position while we are working on our garment. Now, maybe we start here and that is our brake line, but after 10 other darts and manipulations, our brake line ends up here. So our bridle has to be wide enough to cover a range in which our future brake line might be. At the same time, it has to cover the domet and the horsehair and bridge that area between the chest and the lapel. If your bridle is too wide, you're simply making a very large area very stiff for no reason. So your brake line, once the lapel folds over, is more likely to break, actually crack while it goes over the chest. If it's too narrow, then your brake line may change and you may miss the area where your new brake line is and so that area will not be reinforced. So an inch is wide enough to bridge the chest and the lapel to cover a small amount of change in the brake line position without making that entire area super stiff. So let's go ahead and apply our bridle. Bring everything towards you, put the block behind the forepart and now what we are going to do is to first draw in the brake line slightly. We are not doing that to create chest. We have already created a lot of shape with the two darts that we have. What we want is to draw in the brake line so that once the lapel folds over it curves slightly inwards for a close fit against the chest. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. Simulate gravity, allow the front half to lay flat. Then I want you to look at the area where your darts are pointing, okay? And choose a range of roughly six inches, which is about 15 centimeters. That's about this wide, okay? That's roughly the chest area. Not too high to be in the shoulders, not too low to be around the button. Just in the chest area. You can also make it smaller. It can also be three inches. It can be four inches. Nothing more than six inches. That's your max, okay? and make a mark with your chalk. Let me do this with my graphite so that you can see what I'm doing. Here is a range and here is a range. We want to create a small gather in this area and that's it. We're going to put our silicia on our brake line so that the 
break line is aligned with the center of the silesia. Pin the bridle to the canvas at the top. Then I want you to pin the bridle right on the line that you marked, which is roughly here, without doing anything. That area stays flat. Pin through all the layers. Now, I want you to lay the remainder of your bridle flat while aligning the brake line with the center of your bridle and mark your second line that you marked, like so. Then, I want you to mark in front of that chalk line a quarter of an inch, that's six millimeters, on your canvas. Pull your chalk line towards that mark, like so. Make sure that the brake line is aligned with the center of your bridle and pin. That's it. We're going to start our basting. Thread your needle, make a knot, and we are going to start where the first canvassing bastes are, okay? You should be able to see your bastes through the other side, which is right here. Now, we're going to baste in the center of our bridle, starting off with one back tack and a stitch length of half an inch, like so. When you get to the pin, make a back tack. Just be careful not to make your back tacks too small. You do not want to damage your materials. Now, we want to distribute this tiny amount of wave that we have as evenly as possible. So, use your fingers. If you want, you can do a redistribution and put a third pin in the middle. If that helps you, you should not have a lot of surplus anyway. So, it will be quite easy to do. Now, we're going to continue with the same stitch length but now we're gonna do a back tack with every stitch. So that's one stitch and a back tack. That should help to keep everything there in place and prevent it from escaping. So that's the last back tack and the rest is going to be a normal running stitch. Before you finish off your bridle at the bottom here, you will notice that the edge of our front edge and our lapel create a concave line we are going to baste our front edge inlay along our mark stitches. So that means that we also are going to have a concave edge along our fold. If you followed the edge to fold transfer lessons, you would understand that we require the edge of our materials to be stretched out to accommodate for that shape, okay? So stretch out this concave line here Test it out, see if you can actually fold your front edge along the mark stitches above and below the button without having any tension here. If you still get a bit of tension, use a bit of moisture. You don't have to stretch too far in, just the inlay amount. Like so, test again. That's better. Position everything towards the top to lay this entire area flat. Then allow your bridle to lay flat on your canvas and finish off your basting with a back tack. Cut off your bridle five millimeters from the edge and that's it. Now, keep your pins there. It's time to do the baste along the edges to keep those edges down and prevent them from flicking up. Start off with a knot at the top edge of your bridle. Back tack and with the next stitches, do one stitch at the bottom edge, one on the top edge, one bottom, one top, and so on and so forth. Just be very careful that you don't pull these stitches too tight because if you do so, that's gonna happen. And you should prevent that. One at the top, one at the bottom. The whole purpose of this baste is to just hold the edges down, nothing else. Finish off with a back tack or two, and that is your bridle done. Remove the pins, and now it's time to compress whatever we have gathered in the middle here. Again, we haven't done this to create chest. We've just done this to curl the folded edge of the brake line in towards the chest for a closer fit. Go with a dry iron over it, and you don't have to push anything towards the chest. Again, this is not for the chest. It's very important to emphasize this. This is sometimes misunderstood as the creator of chest. It isn't the creator of chest. This top area, you could trim along with the edge of your shoulder and the remainder of it, we're going to baste once the color is on. Before we continue with the next one, let's just quickly pick it up and have a brief evaluation. Now, I can't stress this enough. 
The goal of the bridle is not to create chest. It is only there to slightly allow the brake line fold to curl towards the chest for a closer fit. So when you hold up your forepart, once you've bridled, nothing should look different. It should all look exactly the same, smooth as if untouched. So when you look around your brake line, you shouldn't see any pleats, waves, puckers, and things like that. Now, how this holding in of the brake line is going to push that brake line towards the chest is the following. When we create that gather, the effect of that gather is going to be a small bubble on the lapel. That bubble constantly wants to go towards the folded edge. That push is going to curl the area we drawn in towards the chest and that gives it a slightly closer fit. That's all, nothing more. So let's go ahead and make the other four part exactly the same. Once you've trimmed your horsehair behind the edge of your domet and you want to mark the chest area, you have to make sure that the chest area you mark is exactly the same as the one on the other side. So what do you do? Take your four part and your tape measure and measure from the marking of your button. You can simply put a pin in there if you want, like so, up to the highest marking that you have, the one at the top. That is at this moment nine and three quarters. Then measure whatever you marked on your canvas originally, not the ones on your bridle. And that was a distance of four and a half inches. So we can do the same on this side. Measure up nine and three quarters, make a mark, and then from that, the area you marked, which in my case was four and a half. Of course, the second line was a quarter below that. So we're going to mark our bridle up to this point and then pull it over to that marking there, okay? This is our four part done with a bridle on. If you've done everything correctly, you shouldn't see any puckers, pleats, or creases on the right side of your fabric. Neither should you see any of that on the canvas side. Everything we're gonna do from now onwards is going to create a three-dimensional garment. Our jacket is actually going to become a jacket. It's not just going to be floating panels on our board. So the next few lessons are going to be extremely exciting. Let's take it to the next stage.